Hey, Kimberly Foods Kids. This is Mrs. Vosters talking. Um, I hear that you guys are asking for videos on how to cook different foods. So I'm going to teach you how I grill steaks. Now, I am known for my cheesecakes. But what you didn't know is that I am a master, whoo, tripped over a snow pile, griller. This is my home built grill. It was a birthday present from my husband a couple years ago. I designed it all by myself and um, it is my, well, I, sometimes I like it better than I like my children. Depends on the day. But um, yeah, so it is a gas grill and I like to cook over gas because it's easier because of my husband's farm schedule. So I am preheating the grill, turning it on. Sometimes you want to stand back because sometimes the gas flares up a little bit. This is a three burner grill and I'm lighting my burners, but they're not going on because sometimes that happens. Oh, there it goes. And this one also, so it's getting hot through here. And then this is a, a burner as well if I have a rotisserie chicken because this grill also does rotisserie chickens. It is the best grill ever. So I, when you grill, you want to preheat your grill for a while. So I'm gonna close my grill and let it get nice and hot. And then, and I have a temperature gauge on there, so I'm gonna let it get up to about 250 degrees, and then I'm going to um, scrape my grill down and put my steaks on. We're having tenderloin steaks tonight, so stay tuned. Okay, so we're back. You can see that I've got my grill up to about 300 degrees, as it says there, so it's nice and hot, which means that it is time to scrape the grill. Now you do this for a couple different reasons. You want a nice clean grilling surface, and it allows um, the dirt to come off, but you don't want it like the stuff that's on the bottom of the grates there, if you look through the grates, that kind of adds seasoning, according to some grilling experts. I don't know, I just know that I love to grill. So. In my doors here, I have my grill brush. So you want to use some elbow grease and really scrape your grill, even if it's not the parts that look like it needs scraping, because it's just a good idea to clean your grill. Now, sometimes when you're grilling, you want to oil your grill, but because I am grilling steaks from our farm animals, for those of you who don't know, my husband is a dairy farmer, and so sometimes we butcher our own cattle to eat, and that's what we're eating tonight, tenderloin steaks from our own cow. And so because they were young steaks, young cows, you don't need to grease your grill. But with other tender meat, like if you're going to grill fish, you're going, you're going to want to coat your grates with a nice um, oil. So, I don't know how this is gonna work, but here I am, hello. So now we're going to, now that I've scraped my grill, you just kind of close your grill again, let it get hot, especially in these cold temperatures, because otherwise you're going to cool down your grill and then you're not gonna be able to cook. So next, we'll let that warm up a little bit more and then we will put our meat on the grill. Okay, friends, so now it is time to put the meat on the grill. So here we have our supplies. These are tenderloin steaks from a cow, a dairy cow, not a beef cow. Someday I'll get into the particulars of that. And my seasoning. Now, if I'm grilling anything, unless it calls for specific seasonings, I always season my meat with Laurie seasoned salt and garlic from Costco. They are the best. So we are going to place our meat. Now there are two ways to grill meat. You can direct heat or indirect heat. Indirect heat is things you want to do that are more, um, if you want to roast them low and slow or you're going to make like a pulled pork. But for these steaks, I'm going to do a low heat direct underneath it. So, <sighs> blow out those flames there because that's never good. Uh, oh, and they're back, that's great. So, we're going to place our meat on the grill. Now, Ideally, you should grill meat when it is completely thawed. Well, I was busy online teaching and raising four children, so I kind of forgot to take the steaks out on time. So these are still frozen, so I'm putting them on a little earlier, and my heat is, I'm going to have it at medium heat. So I adjust my meat, even if you aren't using the burner, you still want that on so that that heat is cooking our steaks. So then we season, hold on. There's our steak sizzling away. Can't get that open. So a nice sprinkling on the meat. We are garlic people at our house, so we like lots of garlic. 
and get my seasoning salt open. And you sprinkle a little on. Yay! And then you want to close your grill so the heat stays in there and it keeps it getting nice and hot. Now, a thing with grilling is that you do not want to flip your meat all the time because it will get dried out. So I'm going to let this sit for a while and I'll come back and check it. And I'm gonna go wash my hands because I should have used a pinchers, but I forgot. So I'm gonna go wash my hands and um, take my supplies back inside and get a clean plate for plating up the steaks. All right, folks, so here I am. It's time to flip the steaks. Now you want to loosen them up slowly. Oop, I lost a little chunk there, sorry. And you flip your steaks over. See how I have that nice browning? Now you're still going to see a little bit of blood pooling because the steak is not cooked thoroughly yet, but that will come in time. So you want to also give your meat some space on your grill so that the heat can kind of surround it. And I like, everybody has, everybody who grills has their favorite burner. This area of the grill, if I back up a little bit, you can see the whole thing. That area of the grill is my favorite because over here on this side, it tends to flare up. But it's also a good idea to have a space of the grill in case things get a little too crazy and things start on fire that you can quickly move your meat or your vegetables or your pineapple or whatever you're grilling over from one spot to the other. So this is always my safe zone, unless I need it to, because I'm grilling like 18,000 hot dogs or something. But, so I grill over here, this is my safe zone. So now I flip them and now you let them sit. You don't want to keep flipping or they will become dry. I'm gonna turn my heat down a little bit so it doesn't flare up. Cause as you can see on my steak here, it got a little hot, but that's okay, it happens. But yeah, so my steaks are cooking and you, I only like to season one side, otherwise it gets a little too crazy. So now it will cook on that side again. You lower your lid to keep the heat inside and you let it cook. Hey foods friends, so this is Mrs. Vosters. Yesterday I showed you how to grill a steak on my beautiful, amazing grill. And my phone ran out of space to save any more video. So I couldn't film the last part, but I just wanted to update you on what, how that all worked out. So what I did was I tested my um, steaks with a digital thermometer because you wanna make sure that your food is cooked to the right temperature. Now we like our steaks. Um, I prefer my steak about 150 to 160 degrees, so about a medium to a medium well steak. My husband and my kids like it a little more, so I cooked theirs a little bit longer. And then I took them off my grill and let them rest under a tinfoil tent because if you cut into grilled meat immediately off the grill, the juices do not have time to redisperse throughout the meat. So you want to let your meat rest off the grill and then um, after it's done resting, you can then cut it. So, and it also keeps cooking. So you wanna make sure that you take it off the grill a little earlier than when it says it's done because the residual heat in the meat is going to keep the, grill, the meat cooking basically, even if it's off the heat source. So I took the, the meat off the grill and I let it rest under a tinfoil tent so that the juices could redistribute. And then I served them with, to my family with um, a side of a potato casserole that I made up and a green salad and milk. So it was a really great meal. My husband said that the steaks were really, really good. And I normally don't care for farm steaks because they're pretty tough because we don't raise our, our cows to be eaten. We raise our cows to be milked, but because this cow, um, she couldn't have a baby, so she was of no use to us because cows have to have babies before they can be milked. Um, so we butchered her for meat instead. So her, their meats are, their meat is typically a little more um, tough than tender, but I got these steaks perfectly cooked. So grilling is fun and it's easy and it's a fun challenge. So if you like learning how to grill, I will be happy to post more videos on how to grill. Just let your food teachers know and I will be happy to help out with that. So hope everybody's having a good day. Make sure you're eating healthy and don't be afraid to try the grill if your parents are good with letting you try out the grill. Have a wonderful day, friends. Bye-bye.